Hi, this video is going to be a bit out of uh, left field for you. I know it is for me. I'm going to talk about life and death. Huge topics, right? And to make the, vi the video even weirder, I'm going to look at them through the prism of popular culture, and particularly zombies and vampires. <laughs> so, <laughs> I recorded this video a few months ago and I've been sitting on it, not sure whether to put it out there or not, but um, I looked through it again today and I figured it deserves to be seen. At least a few of you will probably get some insight out of it. So um, here it is. Uh, I hope you get something out of it and uh, thanks for watching. People are having a hard time coming to terms with the complexity of life and death with those two themes. They're having a hard time deal with, dealing with the difficulties of life. And they're looking for a way to escape that through this uh, simplified living that these characters offer. And they're also afraid of dying. And so the fact that these characters don't die um, is good escape, escapism from, from, all, from all that fear. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about this. And uh, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm not. But uh, this is what I think about it at this point. I took some notes just so I'd stay on topic here because I know that uh, my videos tend to run sort of long so I'm trying to keep this uh, shorter. So whatever your beliefs about uh, life after death, one thing is for certain the life you're living now is going to end within the span of a few decades. If you're 20 now, it's going to end uh, within 50 years or so. You know, that's the way it is. Um, and the sooner you come to terms with that, the, the better it's going to be for you for the rest of your life. Because the sooner you get over that fear of dying, um, the more you can enjoy life, the life that you have, and the more fully that you can live it. Um, I'd like to submit to you that uh, one way we grapple with death is through the introduction of deathless characters into popular culture. So those characters, as I mentioned, are, you know, vampires and zombies. Now we call both of them undead and we've made up all sorts of silly stories about them to explain their existence um, and ways in which they survive death because death scares us so much. Um, but yet, neither character is something, obviously, that we choose rationally. If we were offered the choice to live as a vampire or as a zombie, we'd have misgivings about either one of them because obviously we know the pitfalls of those kinds of lifestyles and yet people are still obsessed with them. Makes no sense to me. Um, but let me spell it out for you. Uh, both vampires and zombies must continually kill in order to survive and in that sense they're not only selfish because they're sacrificing others innocent others in order to preserve themselves but in escaping their own death they force death upon others so you see this is just a, a really really bad negative feedback loop where um, these fictional characters escape death but only by bringing death to others and suffering and pain and horror um, I don't get it. I don't get the fascination with these these things. Now, I suppose I, I should jump on the vampire bandwagon, you know, being from Transylvania and all, um, and being just a few, uh, what, 20-something kilometers away from Sigishwara and uh, about two hours away from Brand Castle, but I still, you know, it's hard for me to get into this nonsense. Um, you know, the, the vampire books had their time, they, they outlived their usefulness, and the movies also. Why is this shit still going on? I don't get it. <laughs> um, now, these, these characters um, offer us ways in which um, they deal with the question of death, but also with the question of life. They offer simplified ways to, to view and treat an existence which many of us find uh, to be complicated and stressful. 
uh, zombies are the simpler example here, right? Instead of dealing with uh, complexity and options of life, with taxes and bills and and uh, jobs and commutes and children and all of that, they only deal with one thing. Where's the brain? I need some brain. I gotta have some brain. That's it. <laughs> Vampires are a bit more complicated because they were invented in the uh, in the 18th century, uh, 19th century, I apologize. Uh, obviously, stories about vampires have been around since the time of Vlad Tepes, or, or, or as you know him, Dracula. But uh, they only became popular um, after Bram Stoker wrote his uh, seminal book on the subject. And that was in the 19th century. And I, so the, the vampires offer us a more complicated way to, to, to live, a sort of a, a more human, if you will, way to live than zombies, because they actually have a life. Uh, they're actually rational, more or less. They have uh, needs, desires that are more complex than words. Um, and um, they, they also have a better, well, not better, but they have an interesting perspective on, on life and time because they live so long. Again, I'm talking about fictional characters and I'm getting into this nonsense. I can't believe it, but I'm trying to explain it to myself and to you. So it's just silly. <laughs> um, but that's why vampires ha offer a more complicated example of this, of this sort of thing, of, of how to deal with life. But it's still more simple than having to deal with actual life, right? And I think that's why people buy into this nonsense. Uh, yeah. Now, if we're to stack these deathless characters by level of complexity against others invented throughout history, we obviously find them on the lower, lower rungs of uh, life's ladder. Uh, certainly, if we stack them up against the gods of yore, um, you know, vampires, zombies, they're just, you know, little pathetic things feeding on carcasses and causing death, whereas the gods were so much more, you know, they were full beings, complex beings who created life, who uh, did amazing things, who conducted warfare and uh, conquered and whatnot. If you're to buy into that god um, mythology, uh, the, the Greeks were, were particularly good with this um, So again, we find these, these deathless characters that are popular nowadays on the lower rungs of uh, life's ladder. Uh, but I think as, as life started to move faster and became more complex and harder to deal with, especially after we experienced world wars that uh, terrified and, and, and scarred and scared entire continents, we began to look for simpler, simpler models to, 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 to lead life and simpler ways to cheat death. And we came up with this shit. Um, so, uh, you know, we came up with blood-sucking parasites or blabbering putrid corpses that drag their rancid meat through cities in the countryside looking for brains. Uh, it's quite sad, really, to see where we've arrived. Uh, you know, I, I miss the lofty, deathless characters of old. You know, the gods that were articulate, powerful, higher, and better than man. Although sometimes they were just as bad and petty and vindictive um, as men. But at least they gave us something to look up to. Now we've got... You know what we've got now. Um... It uh, makes for good escapism through books and uh, TV shows and movies, but it doesn't make for a good alternative to death, and nor does it help us deal with the complexity of life, which is really where the crux of the matter is, as far as I'm concerned. Instead, we end up terrifying ourselves even more with the various end-of-day scenarios that are fed to us when we watch or read about these characters. Because there are people out there who are more than happy to come up with end-of-day shit, post-apocalyptic crap, um, as long as it sells something, right? 
um, maybe they're screwed up and they're looking for ways to deal with the nonsense that's inside their heads. But it doesn't mean we have to buy into that shit. Um, the, the, there's no easy to lose solution to this for you. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm presenting you with a problem, but I can't offer you uh, an easy solution. There's no pill to pop. Uh, life is only going to get more faster and more com uh, more faster. Oh yeah, that's grammatically correct. It's after midnight here. I'm a bit tired. <laughs> Life's only getting faster and more complex. At least it seems that way because we haven't yet learned to filter all that is coming our way and to only deal with things that are of immediate concern to us. And that's what people did before our time. They didn't have access to all this flood of information. They weren't bombarded with news and with bits of stuff, useless trivia and crap that's going on in other people's lives that we don't need to know, before, you know, before our time. Um, so they didn't have to make that choice. They'd have probably been overwhelmed as well. Uh, but uh, they, weren't the one, they weren't the ones living in this time. We're the ones living in it now. And so we have to learn how to deal with it. Um, so just because we have access to something doesn't mean we should introduce it into our lives. We need to turn the TV off more often. We need to put our phones away, spend less time on social networks, and spend more time with ourselves. You know, getting to know who we are, developing the skills that are going to make us better people, maybe help us earn more and take better care of our families, or simply... Um, Feed our souls. Just learn things that make you feel passionate about living, that make you want to get up in the morning and be happy about life, not look for ways to escape it through shit like vampire and TV shows, vampire and zombie TV shows. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, we need to go out there and, you know, explore nature, sit in silence and just listen to the thoughts in our head or try to clear the thoughts in our head and just listen to the sounds of nature. Now, this is not going to take us all the way, but it's going to put us in a much better place to deal with life and ultimately to deal with death because we all have to face that fear of death and get over it. Otherwise, we're going to, whether we um, are conscious of that fear or not, we live with it every day, uh, the fear of death, I mean. And unless you get over that fear, unless you face it, you're going to end, end up a, an old person, or maybe a not-so-old person, looking right at death and being completely afraid and not knowing what's going to happen. And we, having realized that you've wasted your life being afraid of that, which you couldn't help. Um, so, But as long as we continue to be terrified by this complexity of the modern life, I think... And by the, it's, uh, it's quickly approaching end, because let's face it, the faster life moves, or the faster it seems that it moves, the faster death is going to arrive. And so we're going to continue to look for quick fixes, um, but they're not going to be the solution. They're going to be inadequate, unrealistic, and grotesque versions of our current lives, you know, such as the shit that's being portrayed in these vampire and zombie TV shows. Uh, and these scenarios are going to end up inflicting more of the pain and suffering that's been scaring us. Uh, even though we think we're escaping into these things because they're going to offer us uh, a simpler way to see existence and, uh, and uh, take us out of the routine of our daily living. So yeah, I just, uh, I wish instead of having these shows available, we'd have, you know, better shows that offer us better models of living our lives. So we have something to look to or toward instead of feeling like shit after we get up uh, from one of those, from watching one of those shows and uh, being terrified inside but thinking, oh, it was just, it's all fiction, it doesn't matter. Um, but at the same time, it takes days to snap out of that depression that that stupid show induced. And if you don't 
I, I got news for you. If you don't realize how much those things are affecting you, you can need to take a break from them for a while. Just take a break. Two, three weeks should do it, but do something meaningful in that time. Instead of watching those shows, they're going to be there when you get back, by the way. So don't think you're going to miss out on anything. Just take a break. And instead of watching those shows, go to, go to something else, like read a book, or go, go biking, um, go out running, go out and spend time with friends, you know, telling jokes or funny stories. Spend that time in a different way. And then you can come back to your show and see how it makes you feel after you've broken off this chain of stupid addiction in your head. Uh, see how they make you feel and I guarantee it's gonna make you feel like shit and it's gonna darken your day and you'll you'll start wondering why you were watching it in the first place the idea is as I stated in the video before is to try to deal with these questions in your own mind and not look for answers in those particular characters that are presented to us in popular culture because you won't get the answers there. There are no such things as vampires and zombies. Sorry. Uh, but there are such things as lives wasted um, on uh, useless activities. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.